Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video you will get five proven ways how you can actually boost your app's performance to the next level. So if you're just before making a big release of your app, if you want to release it to Play Store, then what should you really consider when it comes to improving and optimizing the performance of your app. And when I speak of performance here, then I mean everything from your app speed, of course, over to your app size, so the APK size, over to memory consumption and battery usage. So I will give you tips how you can optimize all these four factors. So definitely watch this video till the end if you really want to optimize your app. Number one here, and that is a big one, is that you should actually use R8 before publishing your app. What is R8? Many people will think it's actually ProGuard, but it's, yeah, it's similar to ProGuard. It is also a, a tool to optimize your code before a release build. And it basically does three major things to um, make your APK smaller. And also it has a side effect that it um, makes it harder to reverse engineer. But I'm talking about making it smaller here because this video is about performance. So it does three major uh, things to do that. On the one hand, it renames all your classes, all your functions, all your fields to short unreadable names. So that of course makes your file smaller because the names are shorter. And in your release build, you don't need to read your code. So that's totally fine. If someone now comes over and reverse engineers your app, they will only get very unreadable names. So that is the nice side effect that the, why you should always use R8 to basically obfuscate your code. That's how it's called. However, it also does different things. It also comes with a big benefit that it just removes unused classes and unused functions. And you might wonder, okay, why would I include a function or a class in my code in the release build that I don't even need? Well, the big advantage is it will also do that with the libraries. So let's say you include a big library that adds 10 megabytes of size to your APK, but you only use two functions of the library. Then what R8 will do is before releasing, so for your release build basically, is it will simply throw away all the parts of that 10 megabytes library that your app doesn't need and will only keep these classes with the two functions that you're actually using in your app, which will drastically actually decrease your, your app size. And what it can do is it can actually just remove unused resources. So if you, for example, have some uh, unused strings, then these will be removed. If you have some unused images, these will be removed. Of course, you should also take care to actually only include what you need there, but sometimes we miss things and then our aid comes to the rescue. If you want to know how to enable R8, that's really easy. I think it's already enabled by default, but there is a blog in Gradle where you specify the options for your release build. And you want to make sure that you set minify enable to true and shrink resources to true. And then you're ready to actually publish your app on Google Play if you consider the other four tips that I have here for you. Number two is a very quick one, but a very important one. Because these performance issues are often very individual from app to app, so there are apps that have totally different bottlenecks than other apps, the best way to find out your app's bottlenecks is to use the Android Studio Profiler. It will give you exactly these insights that I talked about here in regards to performance, like uh, networking, so how much network data your app actually takes, uh, how how fast your app is, your memory consumption, your battery consumption. It will give you insights on all of that while you're using the app. So you can test out certain features of your app. Uh, maybe you have a video calling app. You just stay in a call and then you see, okay, that's how much RAM my app actually consumes in that call. Maybe you then have an additional chat or so. You open this and you see, okay, here's actually a spike in my uh, battery consumption, in my network consumption or so. Maybe I need to optimize that a little bit. The Android Studio Profiler just gives you a very good understanding of when your app is actually using a lot of resources in whatever uh, sense that would be. Number three is cache whenever possible. Whenever you can cache data, whenever there is data you want to reuse that you actually get from the network, but that you can reuse on uh, later launches of your app, then cache that data. You don't want to refetch that. So you of course only want to refetch data when it needs to be up to date every time the user uses the app. But very often we're totally fine just storing data that we fetched once in a room database 
or maybe some files in your uh, app's local cache directory. And of course, you want to make sure that you use a proper image caching library like Coil, Glide, Picasso, and all these typical libraries that we have for Android that are out there. Always use one of these to make sure that your app actually has the fastest access to data possible. Number four is one that actually optimizes your app's memory consumption. And that is before you release your app, you should always make sure that your app does not have any major memory leaks. A memory leak happens when the garbage collector basically does not collect an object in your code that is not needed anymore. So that would that's often caused in combination with Android components such as activities or so that have a life cycle in combination with static fields like in Kotlin that those would be companion objects. Those are typical leaks um, often with context objects actually as well. So what that would cause is that your app takes memory that it can't actually use but the memory is taken away and it can't be used by your app, by other apps of your phone. So definitely make sure to check that before release. How can you check that? You can simply use an app called a Leak Canary, which will detect these leaks for you. I also have a video about that, which you can simply check out up here if you want to see how I do this and how I use this app to find out my leaks. And finally, number five, and that's also an important one, is that you should really optimize the network usage of your app. Because networking is one of the main factors that drain your uh, that drain your phone's battery. So you should definitely make sure that you optimize that. Well, how can you optimize that? And first of all, maybe why that is the case that networking drains so much of your battery. Um, so, but your phone has a so-called radio chip, which communicates with all these cell phone towers out there. And whenever your app makes a request, the way this will work is the phone will take uh, the, the phone will turn on this um, networking chip, this radio chip, because by default it's turned off just to save battery. But of course, if your app needs to communicate, it is turned on. It will then talk to some kind of cell phone tower. And then it will stay on for a little bit longer because the server could respond, of course, with a response your app actually needs. So that means if your app has a bunch of these requests over a period of time, like you have a request here, then here, then here, and after every request, the, the chip needs to stay on for a while until it waits for a response, then you actually keep this chip on for longer than necessary. Of course, if this request is user initiated, so if you, for example, send a chat message or so, then that needs to happen immediately. Then you can't postpone this or batch it together, which would be the solution for the problem I talked about here. But if that's something like synchronizing data to your server, if that's maybe um, yeah, just submitting some logs your app made to your server to, to do further analytics with that, then you can actually batch that together to have one big request that you send to your server and that way you don't have all these uh, all these little gaps where your phone is waiting for a response. And a very brilliant way on Android we can use to actually handle this problem which is a rather difficult problem to solve but uh, yeah on Android we have Work Manager which deals with all that so you can have work constraints like only submit a uh, bunch of data when internet is available. You can uh, put different types of work together that you want to perform. So really make use of Work Manager if you need to synchronize data, if you need to yeah, just uh, send some data to your servers that is not user, user initiated and then you can optimize your app's battery life or rather your phone's battery life by a lot. Those were my five main tips that I would give you to improve your app's performance. Do you actually have more tips to give? Then I would be really happy to read that in the comments so we can also help each other. Maybe I missed something here. So just put it down in the comments. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you back in the next one. Have an amazing day. Bye bye. <music>